Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we are going to talk about distressed leather. Um, so what I mean by distressed leather? Well, distressed leather is old, damaged, beat up leather and this has become, there's, I see this a lot on miniatures now, it's become very popular um, and for good reason because it looks pretty cool. So you, everybody probably recognizes our little giant friend here and his tats from the, from the last hobby cheating. If you didn't go watch the last one, you want to see how he did that, you can go check that out. Um, but this guy also has these big leather straps here and here, right, and here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to make this look like old distressed leather. So what have I done up to this point? Let's talk about the, the pre-work here. So obviously this guy was Zenithal highlighted, okay? And then I, if you go back and watch um, my hobby cheating tutorial on preparing for your best miniature, it was all those steps. So it's basically my standard preparation ritual. He was Zenithal highlighted, and then he was washed with our uh, a watered down Vallejo dark gray model wash to get those recesses cut out. And then it was, this was all dry brushed with an ivory color. That's it. And what the reason for, and with distressed leather, you definitely want to do that dry brushing step. That's the most important. Okay. People often poo poo dry brushing or something recently. No, there's plenty of uses for it. It's a tool in your toolbox. Don't get rid of it. Okay. So what we're going to do here is distressed leather, the key to it is it has lots of little dots and scratches and cuts and things like that. And we're going to take these and we're going to do that. So we needed to get the edges highlighted, so hence the dry brushing. Now, I went in and kind of manually grabbed a few of them as well, just kind of took my brush. Where I couldn't get it exactly with the dry brushing, we just took our brush and I went sideways like this across the edges with just a very small amount of paint on. Effectively, a little more targeted dry brush. Okay. But what we're going to do now is distress this up. So what are we going to use? Well, we've got our black again. We've got some white sands from scale 75, but any ivory color you have will, will work. And then we've got a selection of interesting browns here. So I've got some sepia ink from Vallejo, our old friend Seraphim Sepia, and then some Agrax Earthshade. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to focus up our efforts here on, um, on this part here. So because this, I think, is pretty visible. The first thing we want to do with our, uh, when we're doing our distressed leather, is we want to get some fairly watered down of our ivory, okay? Something that's going to have some good flow to it. And then, as so you can see here, how it is on my brush, we test it. It's, it's a little bit thicker. We're not, we're not glazing or anything here. We just, you know, we want some nice flow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start drawing some little lines and cuts and just making, on the individual bands, doing some individual dots and slashes. The bigger your leather area, the more you can do this. You can draw these big lines across the, the leather. And you're just going to, real quick, you just I'm just like putting a bunch of these little slashes all over this leather. Now, the reason I say you want some good flow is because you don't want to have to push your brush or it's going to get flat. You want these to be as thin as you can possibly make them, okay? You just want little, thin scratches. They should be in different directions and stuff like that. Just all sorts of little, thin cuts into the leather here and there, okay? Nothing crazy, that's all we're doing. We're just scratching it up. We're just putting little interesting cuts into it that run. The key is by making them mostly vertical, they run the opposite direction, okay? Oh, oops, we fell off our little, we fell off our hole here. There we go. They run in running the opposite direction. That's what makes them a little more visually interesting. So we didn't do a lot there. Now we're going to take our black, okay? And we're going to trace all those same lines we just made on one side of them, okay? So now I go back over, and I'm just trying to hit the same lines I just did. And so now what we're doing is we're just putting in some nice, 
solid. When you do dots, they don't all have to be scratches. Sometimes they can just be dots. Okay. But you want them to actually be fairly pronounced. Don't worry about it standing out. We're going to handle that later. Okay, you don't want to, you don't need to, you don't need to worry about being too soft with it. And the bigger the leather area you've got, the more you can do this. So if I had like a, like up here on his little butt flap, well, let's, this is probably going to be in leather as well. So on his little butt flap here, I, I would do a big, let's, uh, let's work in that area as well. Because I can really show it off up here. Okay. So up here on his butt flap, we're going to paint his butt. We would actually start with the white. Here, I'll just trace it. So we want to do... I need to really wet up my white a little more. It's not quite flowing how I want it to. There we go. If your paint isn't working how you want, stop, adjust it, get back into it. Okay. So we want some good cross hatches, right? And then we want to go like that, and maybe a little one there, and there. We're going to put a couple dots around, and a cross hatch scratch. There you go. So you can see what those are? Simple enough, right? You can do a bunch more, you can do, you know, less, however you want. The more the more you work these in, the more distressed you're going to make the leather. Okay, and then we're going to trace those same lines and dots. So we trace, and there we go. Okay, and you can even put a couple extra in with just the black if you want, because the black is really the key. But what we're doing here... So now you can see on his butt, you can see those scratches. There we go. Okay? Now, next up. Next step to our distressed leather. Is we're going to grab a brush that we don't care about very much. Okay? Because we're going to mess it up. Anytime we do this, we want to grab a not as nice brush. Okay. Now I'm going to get into my white again. I'm going to get most of it off in my thumb. Okay? And then what I'm going to do is just start stippling at the leather. So you see the effect I'm getting there? That's what you want. We're actually, this is a great way to destroy a brush, by the way. Do not do this with one of your nice brushes. Because you will ruin it. Fast. Okay? So now what we've got is something like that. See that? Okay. I had no idea when I started this tutorial that I would be focusing in the camera on us staring at a miniature's butt together for the whole time. So isn't life funny? Okay. So there we go. The pre-work is what's relevant here. This is all a, a test in undershading. So now I'm going to take some of my sepia ink. I actually need to switch palettes because I don't... I'm not going to put ink onto my wet palette. Okay. There we go. So now I'm going to take some of my sepia ink. Just a few drops there. We're going to water that down. About, uh, if you're using a normal ink like I am, my ratio is about 3 to 2. So whatever ratio works for you. Um, but you want it fairly thin. And now I'm going to grab a bigger brush. Okay. And now we're going to turn this into, we're going to do our first step. You still want a nice wet brush. Test it like that on your thumb. You should still be able to see some of the white underneath it. Okay. And if it's not, if it's, uh, you remember, again, you can always put another layer on. You can't, it's very hard to take paint off. So now, over the top of that, we're just going to go in and lay down our sepia ink. This guy has interesting underwear. Same thing here on the 
these plates. This is going to be a relatively thin coverage the first time you do it. That's what you want. Okay? We're not trying to completely paint it brown here. We're trying to get, and we want that ink to run down. We want it to collect down in the crevices on pieces like this, on these bands, right? That's going to work in our favor. Okay, so obviously I'm not going to do all the leather here, but the goal is that you'll notice what we're doing is the white gets very affected by the sepia ink, right? And the black, not so much, right? This guy really doesn't want to stay in his spot. There we go. I need to reattach it before we come back. Okay, so we've got all the ink on. I'm going to let this dry. Um, I'll probably do up the rest of them, and when we come back, we'll do the next step. Okay? Back in a moment. All right, and we're back. We've reattached. I've got this guy fixed up, so he's better attached now. Hopefully, we'll stop slipping. And we've got everything turned brown, so you can see. We've got all these done. Now, let's take a look here at how our distressed came through. Let's look real close at his butt. Um, so you can see how the speckle pattern and the cuts, okay, came through. So our next step, after the sepia ink, okay, and you can see how it's making that look kind of distressed because it creates little bits of variation. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to really water down some, some of that same two colors I had before. Okay, some of the white or ivory, really, and some of the black. Okay. And what we're going to do is I'm actually going to retrace just a few of those. Now, I know what you're thinking, Vince. Why would you go to all that trouble if you're just going to redo it? Well, because we're, we're not totally redoing it. I'm not tracing the whole line this time. Usually what I'm doing is grabbing the centermost point of it, and I'm following that. Okay, so the idea here is we're creating some deep cuts where the deep cuts, where the, uh, where the slice or the damage or whatever would have been deeper and so hence will be more pronounced. Now again, here's the thing. We don't actually even have to hit all the same spots. We can add new ones at this level, at this level and that's actually really good to do because every one of these, every time we put over a new layer, What's going to happen is we're going to cover up some of the previous layer to some degree. So we're going to get lots of different layers of this paint and then wash and then paint and then wash. And the key is that creates a bunch of different variation in the distress of the leather. And so what ends up happening is we get a look exactly what we're aiming for because some are very faded and very, very honestly, even hard to see. Some are very pronounced and very easy to see. And what that shows is that the leather's very old, that it's been beaten up a lot of times, and that it's got all these deep scratches that have been oiled and healed, maybe some in the leather healed. I'm using little air finger quotes. I know you can see my hands, so I'm not, but you get the idea. Leather doesn't actually grow back. But if you oil leather and stuff like that, it will wear down over time. And you'll some of those cuts will be diminished in how much they show up. If the leather actually has, you know, spots in it, like this has a little hole right there you can see, I'm going to make sure I get the bottom of those so that that's nice and picked out. Okay? But really I'm just kind of making some, some slices, some cuts, creating some visual interest here or there, following any lines. Okay? So there we go. we got some good ones in there. You can take it as far as you want. You can sit here put a bunch of hacks into it if you really wanted to, that's fine. Now, same thing as before, I'm going to get a little of my white. This time I'm going to really make sure it's off. Because I don't, we want this very, very light. Okay. Now, again, very simply, I'm going to speckle, 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 just stippling it around, right? You can see me. I'm just stabbing the miniature. Just stabbing at it. Again, this will ruin your brush. 
Please don't, please don't use your nice brushes when you're doing something like this. I don't want to be responsible for you ruining a brush you paid good money for. Use something old that has no other purpose. Maybe a wash brush you've got around or something like this is. Okay. All right. A little more speckling here down on the bottom. So, once we've got our nice speckles in here from our stippling, you notice I didn't do another layer of black on this time. That's because the black isn't really going to ever go away. The black is always more or less going to show because it's black, it doesn't really get affected by this, these layers of washing we're doing. So now, we're going to go to our Seraphim Sepia, which is much lighter and thinner than the previous ink I used, even watered down. It's still not going to cover as well. There we go. Okay. All right. So now, I want to take some Seraphim Sepia, and I'm just going to... Guess what we're gonna do? We're just you notice I just dumped it on there. Yep. And then I then I spread it out with my brush. Okay, because we are just we're slathering here, folks. This is salad dressing time. We slather it on like some some delicious gravy in celebration of Thanksgiving. This time we didn't forget the gravy. Okay. If I have a larger flat surface like this, I won't slather as heavily. With this heavily pitted surface, I can afford to. Okay. All right, so. Slather, slather, slather. All right, so I'm going to keep slathering. And all I'm doing is just throwing a layer of this down. Okay? Then I'm going to let this dry, and we'll come back and we'll see how everything looks then. Back in a minute. All right, and we're back. Our sepia is dry, or at least good enough for, for us to continue. And so the next step is a temperature check. And here's what I mean. You need to look at what you've done so far. What we're going for is a lot of variation in the leather, right? You can see, you can see all these different colors on his butt here, right? Of different places where it's tinted it and scratches and things like that and how it's come through. So my advice to you for the next step is, is there is no exact next step. Because I don't know how thickly you applied the wash, what inks you're using, what shades you're using, and the various paints you use could have a big effect on how your, your leather is looking at this point. If you can still see a lot of white, okay, then the right answer may be, like you're using a serum sepia, go over it with that again, okay? If you so, if you haven't tinted all the colors, if you are, are if you've lost too much of your scratches and stuff like that, you can't see them really coming through anymore. Go through with your white and your black and recreate some of those scratches, okay? Um, or put them in new places. Do it again, uh, and then go and do another sepia wash. The point is, is that um, the the next step is you got to play it by ear a little, right? Because what's right for me here at this point on this model, given the amount of space I'm working with, the leather that I'm working with, may not be the same for you. You might do another stipple. You might do some more cuts. You might do another layer of sepia. Do what's going to get you closest to the end point, which is to have all of this with a lot of different browns. And the reason we're using all these washes and then applying more white is because we're really pushing the contrast. We want the darkest parts to look old, and dark and weathered, but we still want there to be some high points that represent fresh cuts or scrapes in the leather where it's been worn away recently or something like that, where it's fresh, okay? So that's what we're aiming at. Exactly what the, what the right step is for you, you can pretty much figure out, I suspect, based on where we're going here. So what I'm gonna actually do, what I'm not liking on mine is some of my black, because I used a thinned black, didn't quite say stay strong enough. So I'm going to actually go in, and I'm going to retrace some of my black lines here, because I want some really deep, nice lines in my final leather. So, that's 
what I'm doing. I'm recutting some of that black in there. Okay. Again, same thing. You want it to be. You want to keep your paint flowing so you don't have to touch the the brush too hard. Okay. And then so we just, I'm just scattering around some of those. If I see an old one, I can make some new ones. Now, one last time, okay, we're going to take our crappy brush. We're going to go into our ivory. Okay. And we're, again, we're going to wipe almost all this off. And yet again, we're just going to kind of stipple here. But this time I'm going to do it very lightly. Okay, just a few places. Because I want this to be the lightest. Okay. I want only a few spots. Oops, sorry. I want only a few spots. Okay. Okay. Now, our final step, depending on where we're at here, depending on where you're at as you're doing this, is with Agrax. If you don't want to use Agrax, you can use something else like it. I happen to really like Agrax Earthshade for this purpose. Um, it has a wonderful mix of brown and black that just, I don't, there's not really a lot of other inks or shades or washes out there that, that exactly replicate what Agrax is doing. So... Now this time I'm not going to just slap it on quite so much. I'm just going to do a nice wash of it over the model. We're going to do everything. And I want to capture some down in the recesses, but we're not going to go crazy with it. And if you get some too much pooling or something like that... Oh, that was about a nightmare. Look at that guy. Did you see that? You know how close we just came to capturing an utter nightmare on camera? Holy crap. His little blade arm caught the edge of that wash. Jeez, old Pete. And that is like full as full can be. Everybody spilled a pot of GW wash at some point in their painting career. I think it's a it's a rite of passage. If you haven't done it yet, congratulations. And, and I'm happy to hear that you've been painting for like a month. Um, because more or less that's about the amount of time it's going to take for that to happen. Okay. So the point is, we push this around, and again, we're just going to give everything here a nice, even coat. You can see what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not going crazy with it. And that's the reason we wanted to build up that white so many times, because this final Agrax, Agrax is a dark color, and it really knocks, you know, the white right out of things. Um, like, if you have some white paint or, or off-white it's going to darken it way down. Um, so you want to make sure that you had those high spots before you put this on. I will also say, depending on how crazy you went with your stippling at various stages, you may need to do two coats of the Agrax, just like you may need to do two coats of the sepia at certain points. That's okay. The other thing this Agrax is doing is really getting down in those recesses on leather like this and really giving us the, the capture of the dark spots in between, which is what we want. Okay? All right. So I'm going to finish cleaning all this up, make sure I get into all the little cracks and crannies and recesses and such. And uh, when we come back, we'll see what our finished product looks like. And we'll talk about some other steps you can do if you want to take it all the way. So back in a moment. All right. So we're back to finish this guy up. So let's take a look at what we've got we can see how the Agrax is dried. And all these washes, they also have the effect of creating a little more worn, a little more weathered, a spotty effect. And that's what we want. We're doing the scratches. We're doing the stippling. We did some dry brushing. We're doing some washes. All of this creates texture. And so now you can see how that looks. Okay? And you can see on his, his leg bands here. We can see the cuts. We can see the edges of it. We can see how dark it looks. There we go. Now, you can decide for yourself how far is far enough. 
if I was going to, let's talk about next steps you could do from here. You could take a little bit of your sepia, mix it with a little bit of your, uh, your white, okay? So you had sort of a little bit of a, a brown-white paint, and you could kind of come down and grab some of the edges here, okay? And you could kind of like reinforce, I need to get a sharper brush, sorry, I was using one of my wash brushes, and that's not going to work. Okay, so you could kind of come in with that brown-white, and you could kind of reinforce the edges of it, right? If you want some really, really sharp edges on it, we could take that and just kind of grab some of those edges just here and there to really make some of them sharper, to really make some of the highlights stand out, okay? We could go and we could um, do some more scratches, do some more stippling. Like, you can repeat the layers that I did here more times. We could go back and do some more stippling, throw another layer of sepia on. All these things are possible, just depending on how far you want to go with it. But basically, from this point, it's just rinse and repeat. So there you go. And what you should end up with is a nice leather with lots of scratches, Lots of good variation. I think his butt is still the best example over there because we got a nice big flat surface. You can see everything that's going on there. If, it, if, it, if you feel like some of your undercolors, like the black and stuff, is still showing through too much for your taste, guess what? Another layer of uh, another layer of sepia, and those will start to blend right in. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helps you make some of your own worn, distressed leather. Uh, give it a like if you like it. Subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. Feel free to share this video. That's always the nicest thing you can do. And uh, as always, appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.